Hello, Malcolm Laird speaking. Uh, this is another one of our series of short videos about RNZAF aircraft from World War II and the immediate post-war period. Uh, it's about one particular Mustang which we're going to follow through from its arrival in New Zealand, its assembly, and then its use by number two Territorial Air Force Squadron, that is number two Wellington Squadron, and then number 42 squadron RNZAF, where it ended up being a target towing aircraft, and finally it was sold for scrap. So, let's, uh, without further ado, let's just uh, get on with the story. NZ-2402 had been U.S. Army Air Force serial number 45-11491. She was shipped from the U.S. on the ship Dominion Park and received at the Aircraft Assembly Depot Hobsonville, which is near Auckland, on the 22nd of August 1945. The following year, she was placed into rubberized storage, along with all of the other, all 30 other P-51s that had been sent to New Zealand. And then they were transferred by barge and road in February 1947 to Ardmore. In 1952, the aircraft were removed from their rubberized cocoons and the process of assembling and putting them into service began. In this photo, we see some aircraft still with their cocoons on, or part of their cocoons on, some with their US stars and bars on, and I can see one aircraft in the photograph in the mid-ground where the fuselage star and bar has already been overpainted with a round L. So in their service life, some of these aircraft actually wore the round L and bar with the bar still intact right through to the end of their service life, although most ended up with round L's and no bars. And here we see an RNZAF member doing the serious work of commissioning a Mustang. The, uh, the artwork is a most important part of the commissioning process. Just at the top left of the screen, we can see the filler cap for the fuselage fuel tank. Uh, the RNZAF did not actually use this fuel tank, and they received stenciling saying, do not put petrol or gas in this tank. A question I'm frequently asked about the round Ellen bar marking is, did New Zealand paint over the bars of the stars and bars? Well, the answer is yes and no at the same time. But in this case, we see an RNZAF mechanic or painter, I guess, painting over the actual bar. Now, I'm told by Robert Montgomery, who's one of the experts on RNZAF paint schemes from this period, that to paint over the initial, the initial paint schemes were done by sending somebody down to the local paint shop and buying some red and blue house paint. So the actual colour is uh, <laughs> not exactly an official colour, it's just a house paint blue. Continuing on with our story about were the roundel and bars fully painted over, i.e. were the bars painted over, uh, this is a photograph not of NZ2402. It's actually from some parts that remained in New Zealand from NZ2427, of which we've actually done uh, in decal form. Uh, the photograph was taken by Anthony Galbraith, and Anthony has rubbed away uh, with his finger or some cloth um, the, uh, the dust where this round L joins to the adjacent bar. And in the original, if I get close into the scan, I can see that in this case, the round L was painted, but the bar was not painted over. Although the actual color is so similar, you can't really tell the difference. And here is NZ2402 ready to go with number two squadron in 1952. This is the aircraft's first color scheme when put into service. And at this point, it does not have the fin flash, just round L and bar, in a straight out natural metal paint scheme with no doubt silver wings as delivered from the factory. This is a magnificent color photograph taken by the late Brian Lockstone at RNZAF station Ohakia. 
Now this base is where the uh, RNZAF's P8 Poseidons are now based. Uh, NZ2402 served with number 2 Wellington Squadron from the 11th of Ju July 1952 until the 25th of October 1955. Yes, Cadillac of the Sky. I recall uh, Steven Spielberg's movie, Empire of the Sun, where, uh, where the little kid is about to be uh, liberated and Mustangs fly overhead and he shouts out, Cadillac of the Sky. And we see these air beautiful aircraft looking like this. They are indeed a Cadillac of the Sky. This photo shows a lineup of Territorial Air Force Mustangs with engines running during an annual camp at RNZF Station Ohakia. First in line is our aircraft NZ2402 and behind her is NZ2418. Note under the starboard wings both these aircraft still have roundel and bar markings. Now, NZ2418 still has the roundel and bar on the fuselage side whereas NZ2402 has the Wellington checkerboard markings applied. Uh, each each territorial fighter squadron had these checkerboards. Uh, Auckland number one squadron was blue and white. Number two Wellington squadron was black and yellow. Number three Canterbury squadron was red and black. And number four Otago squadron was blue and yellow. This photograph, also at Ohakia, is from a slightly later period. The aircraft now has roundels on both upper wings and we can see the fin flash uh, on the tail. Uh, the checkerboards are still in evidence. Uh, the roundels, originally the roundel and bars, the roundel was painted over the star and bar. Uh, those star and bars were a nominal 35 inches diameter plus a 2 inch extra blue border around the whole star. So that, that gave an overall diameter of 39 inches. When the New Zealanders painted their roundels over the stars, they used the full 39 inches in diameter. And so these particular roundels, they are 39 inches in diameter. And in British parlance, they would be a, well, the unofficial uh, phrase, a D type roundel, where the red dot in the middle is one third of the entire diameter of the roundel. But it's quite uh, an unusual size at 39 inches. Now some RNZAF aircraft ended up with 48 inch uh, roundels on the upper wings. You can generally identify these because they are further inboard being so large in diameter. And uh, if we look, so if we look at the, uh, the, I'm looking at the port side roundel where that uh, little, uh, little fairing uh, just forward of the uh, of the ailerons is cutting into the blue part of the roundel. When an aircraft had the 48 inch roundels, the roundel would just be more almost completely inboard of that of that little fairing. Uh, maybe about a quarter of the 48 inch roundel would be outside of that fairing. Whereas in these 39 inch ones, slightly more than half is outboard of that little fairing. Now we're getting to the later part of NZ2402's career. Uh, I'm going to read uh, some notes made by Robert Montgomery in the 1950s when he observed this aircraft while it was with number 42 squadron. Okay, he says, X number 2 squadron tactical air force and now number 42 squadron RNZAF as a target towing aircraft with modified undercarriage, engine hours 101.35, high speed silver wings and painted rudder and elevator with the area of number two squadrons checkerboards over painted in silver also. So black anti-glare panel, serials and zero two on the fin and under the nose. The zero two on the undercarriage doors is dark green as are the inner faces of the undercarriage doors. It's bright ident blue in the national insignia with roundels in six positions. Number 42 squadron badge with, where are we? Number 42 squadron badge almost worn off on the forward fuselage, 
port side. And now we're approaching the end. According to adf-serials.com, which is a really great resource and has RAAF and RNZAF serial numbers listed for most aircraft. At this point, the aircraft is with number 42 Squadron at Ohakia, where she was used from October 1955 for fighter affiliation, drogue towing, communications and continuation flying. That would be uh, weekend warriors just keeping their hours up. Uh, she was withdrawn from service in April 1957 and ferried to Woodburn, which is a town at the, at the northern part of the South Island, and she was placed in storage on the 24th of May 1957. Um, 19 aircraft were declared surplus with the government stores board and tenders were called, of which five were accepted. Uh, Mr. G. B. Oman of Gisborne bought NZ2402 for £150. Apparently the sale fell through and the aircraft was sold to a scrap merchant who scrapped the aircraft and she was no more. But looking at this photograph, she's looking a little bit worse, a little bit worse for wear, but you know, not too bad. Now see, there's a large 02 painted on the inside face of the undercarriage doors now, and nothing on the outside of the doors. So, there, uh, there concludes our story of NZ2402, which would be a fairly typical career for an RNZAF uh, Mustang in the 1950s. A number survive and uh, yep a number are flying around the world to this day. Uh, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy our other videos. I'll just be uploading them as time permits.